Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my lecture. Uh, that's the introduction to uh, the course IS 439 Web Development Using Application Frameworks. And I'm recording this in the spring of 2023, so it uh, applies to this course in the current semester. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, I'm going to review um, the resources that are associated with the course. Uh, and that includes uh, the Canvas site, which you see right here, and the, um, the syllabus. Uh, the weekly schedule, and then I have a sort of an overview document of the schedule that I call the roadmap, and we're going to take a look at that uh, too. And these are all things that you have access to. If you can log into Canvas, there's a link to everything right here. Okay. Um, so. Let's just look at the Canvas page and find our way around. I've organized my Canvas uh, page a little uh, differently than uh, most of the courses that you may be used to. Um, the folks at the iSchool, the ITD group, uh, they create a template that they give to all of us. And that template is um, a, a, a little too bulky for me. Uh, it has a lot of interesting stuff, but you have to go through all that before you get to the content that you really care about. And I don't have the patience for that, and I'm imagining that maybe you don't either. So I've organized my page um, it, to display these things called modules. And uh, modules are these uh, blocks of uh, content. Okay, so I'm, got, I'm just going to review what the modules are that you're going to see. In addition, I've said that I want to put the most recent announcements at the top of the page. I think technically, I think that's not a module per se, that's some kind of other feature that I turned on. Okay, and of course, in addition to the most recent announcements, you should be able to see all of them. Uh, by going to the the link over in the left hand side navigation uh, panel. So right now we're looking at my view of Canvas. I'm going to switch to the student view where you don't see quite so much uh, stuff. It's not not as hard to see. And you can see you can see the announcements over there as well. Okay. Um, so, what are these modules that I've included? Well, the first one is uh, just kind of identifying the course and key information. Okay, so it includes uh, uh, the number of the course and section, the name of the course uh, over here on the right, it says it meets on uh, Thursday afternoons online. It meets from 4 p.m. to 6 uh, uh, p.m. on Zoom. Then right off I've got links to three important uh, documents. The syllabus, which we'll be taking a look at. The road map, which is a uh, kind of a summary of the schedule. Um, kind of gives you more of a macro view and the weekly schedule, which is where I keep all the detail about what's happening every week in the course. Okay. And then I've got a couple of more things uh, here. Please uh, uh, set your preferred name using the university self-service application. This is a good time for us to visit that. Okay. Um, I want to call you what you want to be called while we're in class, okay? And the way I do that is, especially in this online course, I call you what your name is on Canvas. And uh, actually, while we're in the course, uh, the online session, I call you what your name is on uh, Zoom. Okay, so... Um, 
uh, there's a way to uh, go and set your name, um, set your preferred name using uh, this link right here. You'll get the instructions for how to do that. Oh, and I have to log in for that. So let me pause you and I'll log in. Okay, I'm back and I'm logged in. And uh, I think this is in the iSchool wiki. And this is an article that was written by the people at the help desk about how to how to set up the name that's going to appear in uh, some key university systems, including Zoom in and Canvas. Oh, why I can't go back to that, I don't know. Uh, here we are. Okay, so please do that, all right? Um, and uh, preferably before the first class, but if you don't make it before the first class, just go do that as soon as you can after that, okay? Because I do wanna be calling you um, by the name that you would like to be called by, okay? Uh, the next thing, getting help in high school, quick links, uh, these are some information resources for which they had links in the um, the standard iSchool uh, template for uh, a Canvas front page. And since I didn't use their template, I put them in right here. I think they're handy to have. Okay. Uh, open discussion forum. So I really believe that every class ought to have an open uh, discussion forum. Uh, and I want to use this as a way for students to communicate with other students. Now, our TA, Conscious Singh, um, and I will monitor this open discussion forum from time to time, but you should not use us, use it to get help from us. If you need to get help from us, we have this thing called the service uh, desk and that's the way to do it, okay? Is it possible that you could get help on here from other students in the class? Yeah, it could be. Um, you're certainly welcome to try, okay? Um, but if you need something from either the TA or from me, uh, don't use this as a place to do it, okay? Okay, Zoom meetings. Okay, so this is a list of all the Zoom sessions. So we have a Zoom session for each class and we have a Zoom uh, session for each lab uh, session. Uh, Classes will be on Thursdays at 4 p.m. And lab sessions will be on Sundays at 9 a.m. Lab sessions are optional. And I'll be telling you some more about them as we uh, continue. Well, how about that? You would think you should be able to use the back button, but on a lot of apps, you can't. Okay, there's a whole section here called Contact Us, okay? Who is us? Well, it's me and the people helping me teach the course. So it, it's me, it's the TA, a conscious thing. Uh, we're supposed to get a grader, a part-time uh, grader to help as well, because we have a lot of people in the class. So it'll be that person too. So when you need to contact us, the way to do it is uh, through the information that is here. So the first thing in here is instructor and TA uh, details. So there's a little information about me. There's a little information about Akansha. And in both cases, it says um, if you need to meet with us or you need to talk with us, use these things that we're calling the service uh, desk it systemized the way to do it. Don't use our regular email. More information on that soon. Okay. Um, so what do we mean by the service uh, desk? Well, there's a page here for that. Okay, in which I, I describe it a little bit and I give you two links, okay? 
I'll give you a link to this uh, service uh, uh, desk introduction page, which is right here, okay, and includes links to uh, the individual service uh, desk projects for the courses I'm teaching in the current semester, including ours, IS 439 OAG OAU, okay. And there's also a link to the service at desk for this course, and this will bring you to um, the login to get into the service uh, desk and interact with us using this application. Okay, so geez, how do you learn how to use it? Well, if you come back out to the main page, there's, there's a link here to uh, a tutorial video on how to use the service uh, desk. Uh, it was re-recorded just a, a few days ago, so everything's up to date and fresh. So I encourage you to play it. There's also a link here on how to play my YouTube videos, which I hope you've already played. But it, if you have it, I encourage you to stop this and go back and play that. Um, listening to my uh, videos, my video presentation is uh, slow, okay? And if you really want to have the best experience, I'm thinking you're going to want to speed it up. And if you want to know how to do that effectively, play tips on playing my YouTube videos. And then there's a copy of the slides from the uh, tutorial on using the service uh, desk. And you may want to keep them because they're a great kind of a cheat sheet on how to do things on the service uh, desk. Okay. Now we've got a couple of more sections here that are currently empty. And let me tell you what they are. Uh, there's one called Submit Assignments. And this has the usual assignment sub mission activity uh, for each assignment in the course. Okay, and um, I have them hidden here because I copied them from the last time I taught the course, which is a year ago, and all the dates are from a year ago, and I need to adjust them. But as soon as I do that, I'll uh, publish them all, and they'll all show up uh, here. Assignment solutions, okay, all these coding assignments I give you, and essentially there's a coding assignment or something like a coding assignment most weeks in the course, okay. Um, when we come back to class, we review solutions, and I publish my official solution, okay. That's one of the reasons why you need to hand the assignment in on time. So I'm going to be um, uh, publishing or uncovering my solution to each of these as we go through the course. All right. So that's uh, that. So again, we've got the syllabus, the road map, and the weekly schedule. And I'm going to talk you through the three of those things. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to bob around from each. Okay. So. Uh, these are links, okay, to, uh, uh, to information resources in, on the web. If I should update any of these, I'll just change the document that we're linking to. And I'll make an announcement in Canvas Announcements, okay? So these are always good links to the current version of each thing. Okay, well, let's look at the syllabus, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, the name, Web Development Using Application Frameworks. The number in the section. Uh, we're in spring 2023. I'm Kevin Trainer. Uh, we'll have two course assistants as it's currently planned. A conscious thing. Um, is our TA, she was my TA a year ago. Um, she knows the course and um, I'm glad to have her back. 
uh, we're probably going to have a greater in addition, and that person needs to be selected. Yeah. Uh, class times. Uh, this is an online course that meets on Thursday afternoon from 4 to 6. 4 to 6 is only a two-hour period, but uh, a lot of the material for this course is recorded. Okay, so I'm not going to be doing, I'll do a little bit of lecturing um, during our class session, but not a whole lot. Uh, mostly, we're going to be uh, reviewing solutions and having uh, discussions. Okay. Uh, optional lab sessions. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I say here, I hold optional lab sessions two times per week. Please join me to ask a question to discuss solutions to previous assignments. So maybe you didn't get full opportunity to discuss that during class or you were shy about some question that you had. Uh, well, we can talk about it during the lab. Uh, to get help with the current assignment to discuss the final project or just to say hello. I work with students on a first come first served basis. Okay, so I do this twice a week. Okay. It's hard to believe, but a lot of our two-hour class uh, sessions will be longer than we need. Again, I'm not doing long lectures in class. And so the end of the time I will use for lab session. And then I can usually stay for a while after class um, if more people need help. Okay. Uh, and then um the the dedicated lab session is on sunday morning from 9 to 10. i make it on sunday because uh, my other labs are on friday afternoon and we've just had the class on thursday and i'm not sure that you're going to have the time to um you know go to class and then work on the new assignments, and then ha have all of your questions organized before Friday afternoon. So I've, I've moved them to Sunday morning. I'd rather not get up on Sunday morning as well, but I think this is a time that's going to work for you. Um, your assignments for the week are due on Sunday evening. All right, so um, ideally what I suggest is try the assignment for the week by Saturday, okay? And you'll know pretty early on if they're having uh, uh, trouble. So then you'll know that you need to come on Sunday morning, okay? And then we should have you all ready to hand things in on Sunday evening, okay? Um, office hours. I don't have conventional office hours. I have all this lab time. Okay, so if you have a question about something that's not uh, confidential, just uh, come to lab and we'll discuss it. If you have something confidential that you need to discuss, uh, go to the service uh, desk and put in a request for an individual meeting, okay? It'll probably help in, on Zoom. Now, I'm on campus uh, uh, one to uh, two days a week. Um, I'm usually there uh, late on Monday and most of the day on Tuesday, but I'm generally teaching or in meetings. So um, uh, it's rare to drop uh, by my office and find me available to meet, okay? So use the service a desk and put in a request for an individual meeting and we'll work something out fairly quickly. Okay, if you need to contact me or the TA or a grader, use the service desk. This is the same information that was on uh, uh, Canvas. Okay, the course uh, uh, description. Okay, um, let's uh, talk about this because this is how you know whether or not you came to the class that you really want to be in. So the short version is a course in the use and evaluation of back-end web application frameworks for, for system architects, designers, and uh, developers. 
Okay, so there's a lot of people who would like to know about web application frameworks, okay? People who want to be uh, uh, developers, a lot of, lots of, the, of kinds of uh, developers. There are people who want to develop things for their own use or for their, um, oh, maybe their immediate small work group. Or they might be trying to create a product that's going to be used by everybody in a company or the company's uh, customers. Um, uh, you know, so uh, developers of all kinds. And even people don't expect to be a developer themselves if you expect to, um, you know, to be part of the design and architecture process for systems that are delivered over the web, you should really know about these back-end web application frameworks, okay? Now, I am not going to read this whole uh, detailed course uh, 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 description, but I'll pick a couple of highlights, right? Uh, here's the argument for using these frameworks, okay? Um, most of these web applications get pretty big and they've got a lot of parallel parts you know uh, you might have uh, uh, 20 pages that do uh, one thing you might have another 20 pages that do something else you might have another 30 pages that do a third thing these things get big and they're very parallel they have a very similar they have very similar uh, parts. These web, web frameworks are great ways to bang out applications in a standard way where um, your productivity is kind of linear, okay? Uh, because you're putting all these requirements into the framework. Once you know how to do one of the pages of a certain type, then pretty much you can clone it into all the others, okay? And we'll do a lot of uh, page cloning while we're doing this. So, um, you know, you do the first one, it takes you, uh, you know, kind of X amount of time. You do the second one, it probably takes half that much. You do the third one, it probably takes a little bit less. And then you can do the next 30 or 40 in the same amount of time that it took you to do the third one. Okay, it has a real linear, you know, you get over the learning curve and then you can just bang them out forever and you know pretty much exactly how long that they're going to take and they're not going to take a whole long uh, time. Okay. Uh, this is good for uh, developers. It's good for maintainers, okay? Um, it's pretty easy when you build a web application on the basis of a web application framework. And the one that we're using is uh, Django. It's pretty easy to figure out where the code is that you need to change, okay? Because things are all in their place. There are standard uh, parts, and you find the part that you're interested in, and um, you know you change it or enhance it, and you test it, and off you go again. Okay, so um, it's a real mature and serious way to develop a uh, moderate to large web application. Okay, and it, it's uh, something that anybody can learn. And um, you, you can learn it, you will learn it, you'll be good at it, and there you go. Now, in this course, we're gonna use a really uh, popular um, back-end web application framework called Django. And we use it for two reasons. One is it's Python uh, based. And here at the iSchool, we've kind of standardized on uh, Python as uh, the language that we're going to use to teach our students. And that largely has to do with um, 
the demand for people with uh, Python skills in oh uh, uh, data sciency uh, things, okay, and in oh research more generally, okay. Uh, so that's why we chose it. It's also very popular. So when you look at the Django f frameworks, this is uh, as popular as any, and it's really full service. It, it really has like all the parts. Okay. I don't mean to be saying that this is the best framework for everything. Okay. And one of the important things that we're going to do in the class is we're going to have you, um, we're going to have you pick a set of requirements for a system that you're expecting or you're imagining that you might be responsible for uh, when you get to your day job. And um, as long as it's a realistic set of requirements, both uh, functional and non-functional requirements, you can pick whatever you want. And then I want you to go find a framework that's not Django because there are plenty of them. I mean, there are at least 40 to 50 credible frameworks. So there's plenty of opportunities to find things. And I'm going to want you to evaluate that framework for the requirements that you anticipate. Okay? Because there's, one, there's not one perfect framework that's good for everything. Frameworks are either more suitable or less for a particular set of requirements. And um, I want to get you thinking that way. And I want you to leave the course having had some practice at how to think about the requirements and evaluate a framework to see if it's one that you might want to use. Meantime, everything that we do, we're going to do with uh, Django. Okay. Uh, prerequisites. There aren't a lot, but because we're building web applications, you have to know HTML and CSS. Uh, do you have to be a, uh, do you have to be an artisan with HTML and CSS? No, you don't. Okay. You just have to know mechanically how to use them. Okay, and not knowing how to use them, it's going to be hard to learn them at the same time that you're learning uh, Django. Also, the same with uh, Python. I'm going to expect that you know and as much about uh, uh, Python as you would have learned in our introductory course, IS430. Um, and uh, most of the Python that we're going to be using is pretty much follow the leader. Right, um, these frameworks. Um, there are a particular code sequences that you use for all the parts, and we're going to be imitating them. Uh, but again, it's going to drag you down if if you don't know uh, Python. All right, so you should know that. Um, uh, these the web application that we're going to create is dynamic, okay, which means it reacts to user input um, either by the links that are clicked or by forms that are filled out and buttons uh, pushed, and it generates uh, uh, pages of uh, content, okay. Um, you don't have to have experience in doing that kind of work, okay? As long as you know how to build a fairly simple static website with HTML and CSS, you're going to do fine if this is your first, um, this is your first attempt to build a dynamic website. If you've used uh, some common tools for this, like a very popular one is uh, PHP, well, that's going to help you because they're going to know a little bit more. Do you need to know that before you do this course? You don't. And then the last thing is relational uh, uh, databases. We're going to keep all of the all of the content that we're managing, all of the data in a relational uh, database. Okay. Um, 
if you already have worked with relational uh, databases, well, that's going to help. Okay, but even if you haven't, I have enough basic training on relational uh, databases and their design uh, that you'll be able to get by just fine, even if this is your first time through with relational uh, databases. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Okay, so the hard requirements are HTML, CSS, and Python. Okay. Uh, course outcomes. Well, what do we want you to be able to do? Uh, identify the advantages of using a back-end web application framework when designing, developing, and deploying a web application. Two, identify common features of back-end web application frameworks in general. Okay. Three, explain how the specific features of, D of Django correlate with common back-end web application framework features. Four, design code test and deploy web applications that use Django features for models, templates, URL, mapping, views, forms, user authentication and authorization, and deployment. So those are all the, the Django parts we're going to learn about and that we're going to learn to use. Uh, five, uh, design code test and deploy a full-featured Django application to solve a problem of your own choosing. So we're going to do two major projects uh, over the course of the semester. One uh, is called EasyU, Easy University, and it's a tutorial uh, project that I designed and I built, and you're going to uh, build it following along with me throughout the semester. So here's how you're going to learn and you're going to practice. And then you're going to pick an application of your own, okay, that you're going to build as your final project, okay? And um, we're going to want it to be about the size and very akin to the one that we're doing as the uh, uh, tutorial. Okay, and we'll be talking about that a lot. And then evaluate the suitability of a particular backend web application framework based upon an anticipated set of functional and non-functional requirements. Again, there are no perfect frameworks, okay? There are only frameworks that are either uh, more or less suited to a particular set of requirements that you have. So we want to completely dispel the notion, uh, the notion of the perfect framework. And we want to uh, get you thinking about what requirements are going to be important when picking one, and that's the paper that you're going to do. Okay, uh, textbooks. Okay, we have a lot of textbooks, but only one that you have to buy. Okay, um, there's um, uh, the one that you have to buy is by William S. Vincent. Vincent, it's called uh, Django for Beginners. Uh, this is the first semester that we're going to be using it. Uh, Vincent has three popular books. Uh, he has uh, Django for Beginners, uh, Django for Professionals, and uh, one more. Okay. And we're only going to use the Django for uh, beginners. He has uh, self-published uh, these books. You can either get them from the author at the link that we have here or from Amazon. Uh, and from Amazon, you can either get a print version or an electronic version. Uh, I have the electronic version that I bought at, at the author site. Okay. Okay, that's the only thing you should buy. Don't buy anything else, okay? Why? Because everything else is available for free using O'Reilly.com, okay? And the two books that I list here, oh, three books that I list here are uh, important. 
Okay, so let's let's go to O'Reilly.com, and I'm going to do a little advertisement for O'Reilly.com. Okay, so as a member of the Illinois community, uh, you are entitled to a free account at O'Reilly.com. Okay, and uh, if you go to uh, the iSchool, I'm sorry, if you go to the web store for the university and you look up uh, uh, products that are there, there's a listing, I think it's a listing for Safari Books Online. Now that's old branding for this. I don't think it's called Safari Books Online anymore, but that's where you find the link. And you can follow that and use your university address and you can sign up and you can get an account that's free as long as you're uh, with the uh, university. Okay, and then you just get access to all this uh, content, right? Uh, so for me, um, let's see what I can find. Uh, somewhere here, I've got my uh, playlist. Okay, and in my playlist, I've got all my books. And uh, I've got a playlist for Django. Okay, in which I've got uh, some of the books we have here, but not all of them. Okay, oh, I don't have. So, uh, uh, they don't have the Vincent uh, book, but they do have the Pinkham uh, book. So let's uh, get out of here and let's look at uh, Pinkham, uh, Andrew, yeah, Andrew Pinkham. Um, so his, where is he? Django Unleashed. Okay, so the Django Unleashed uh, book by Andrew uh, Pinkham. That used to be the only book that I used. Okay, it's still my favorite book. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of reading in this uh, book, but it's uh, it's an older book. Uh, some of the Django version information is old, but his style of approaching learning uh, Django is impeccable. Okay, so we're gonna spend a lot of time reading things from the book. Okay, so the Vincent book, I talked about the Pigum book, uh, ProGit. Okay, so let's find ProGit. There are several, um, there are several ways to get a free version of ProGit. Okay, um, here's ProGit second edition by Scott uh, 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 Chikan, there is also a free version of this on the web. Um, great book. Uh, I wouldn't buy a paperback uh, copy. I once did. I never use it. I only use the online version. Okay. And then the last one I have here uh, is this uh, book by Andy Oppel. Um, a data modeling, a beginner's uh, guide. And this is a book that everybody should have. Uh, even if you've worked with relational uh, databases uh, before, th this is just a, a, a great book. So this is it, uh, data modeling, a beginner's guide. And you can just access that right here. Okay, so, uh, and then on top of that, um, uh, let's just uh, take a look at uh, the books that they have for Django. Okay, they just go on and on. There are four pages of them, two, three. And you know what I may do is, I may point you to a section in this book or a section in that book uh, because um, there's no perfect uh, Django book. Well, there's no perfect anything, I guess, but um, definitely before the first class, get yourself 
signed up on O'Reilly.com. If you have some problem, call the iSchool Help Desk. They should know how to get you up on that. And um, uh, again, if you do that, then the only book that you need to buy is uh, the Vincent uh, book. Okay. Uh, technology requirements. You're going to need a computer to do this. Most people use a laptop. I have had some students who only have access to a desktop and somehow they managed to get that done. Uh, since we're not going to be meeting in person, that's probably not a hardship. Um, and I'm going to have you installing, for instance, uh, Anaconda. So we're going to we're going to use our Python packages as organized and managed by the Anaconda Open uh, Data Science uh, platform. We're going to use an integrated uh, development environment or IDE called PyCharm Professional. Now, this is a four pay product that we're entitled to a free copy of because we're university uh, people. And I've got instructions on how to download and install that and Anaconda on um, the weekly schedule. OK, now I think you're going to want to use the Git version control system. You don't have to use it until our very last coding assignment. That's probably going to happen on like November 18th. No, not November. We're, we're in the wrong semester. So that would be you know, April 15th, April 10th, or uh, something like that. Okay, so you have a lot of time to get going on Git. Okay, I've got the information about how what I want you to do with Git and how to get started with learning and installing uh, products. I've got that in uh, the weekly assignments for week one. So uh, I recommend that you get started on working with Git. I'm going to show you me using a Git as I go along and I'm going to expect you to pick it up by the time we get to say April. Okay. I'm hoping that you'll be there a lot uh, sooner. OK, I've got a link to the schedule. OK, and then I'm going to go about some. I'm going to talk about the elements of the course. So why don't we interrupt here before we talk about the elements of the course. And let's talk not so much about the schedule first. Let's talk about the course roadmap. Oh, I have that right here. I just have to go to my other uh, tab. OK, so because we're doing a couple of streams of things in the course, going through the schedule week by week, you can you can miss some of the some of the trends that are happening. OK. So I created this road map uh, document, oh, probably two years ago was the first time I, I used it. I teach this every spring, so maybe spring 2021. And um, I've improved it over the couple of years that have gone by. But uh, here's what I want to get across. Uh, we've got some kind of... Uh, themes of things that we do in the course. And when you understand the themes and how these things hold together, you have a better idea of stay, that you're, it's easier to stay oriented and kind of understand what's, what's expected of you and what you're working toward, OK? So we have some kind of administrative things we do, like we start up the course in week uh, uh, one. And you could say that we've got spring break in week uh, nine. OK, that's not coursework. Is it administrative? Well, I'm going to say, you know, and I, I guess I could have put exam week in week uh, 17. But because we don't have an exam in this course, I thought it was uh, uh, best to leave that out. OK. And then. 
here's what we got we've got this thing that i call the tutorial track okay and i've got two columns that have to do with that i've got this thing that i call the final project uh, track and i've got this thing that i call the framework evaluation uh, paper uh, track okay so the tutorial uh, track is where we're learning the basic skills okay we're learning about web application frameworks in general and Django in particular, okay? Um, and what we do is we do a bunch of uh, tutorials uh, week after week after week. The first one that we do in week two is from the Vincent uh, book, okay? And it's from chapter five of the Vincent uh, book. Uh, and why do we use the Vincent uh, book to get started? I used to use a tutorial uh, from an organization called Django Girls. I still like their uh, tutorial. I love that organization. If you want to go to the uh, DjangoGirls.org site and find out more about them, I encourage you to do so. They're great folks. Uh, but this, uh, this uh, fellow, Michael Vincent, He's probably the most popular um, Django tutorial author today, okay? He has the most up-to-date set of tutorials, and he's the one who's maintaining them kind of version uh, by version, okay? Uh, and so you definitely are going to want to work with his uh, stuff, and we do it as a way of kicking off our work, okay? So uh, uh, the, this uh, tutorial track uh, topic is both what we read about and all that stuff. And it's also, it's the tutorial that we do for the week. It's what we hand in. So we do this introductory uh, tutorial from uh, chapter five of, uh, of the Vincent. Uh, book. Then we work on relational uh, database, we work on uh, conceptual data modeling and logical database uh, design. Why do we do that? Well, because Django as a framework is very strong on relational databases. Okay, it's very easy to create a web application that uh, you can use to uh, populate and maintain the data in a relational uh, database, okay? Um, unfortunately, a lot of the uh, Django books do a just horribly poor job of talking about good practices in the design of relational uh, uh, databases and then they go off and they have a, a, a tutorial where you're not really doing good relational uh, database work in the tutorial. So I've got these two uh, weeks in here. Um, they're the first two steps of a three-step process for uh, relational uh, database uh, design and implementation. So the three steps are conceptual data modeling, logical database design, physical database uh, design and implementation. Okay, well, why don't we have the physical here? Well, that's what we do when we get to this thing we call the Django model. So the week after, uh, we start to work on the features from uh, from uh, uh, Django. The readings uh, beginning in week five here are from the Pinkham book. Uh, again, there's a lot of stuff in the Pinkham book that's out of date, but his his uh, basic point of view about um, how to understand this kind of framework and um, the way that you ought to go about learning it and mastering it. I don't think there's anybody any better, even in all those uh, uh, Django books I uh, uh, showed you. So uh, uh, beginning in week five, we're going to learn about the Django model. Um, 
that's the part of the framework that deals with uh, the database. Uh, then we're going to cover the template. Uh, that's the point of the framework that deals with uh, uh, the web page and the content on it. Uh, then we're going to deal with the controller in which we learn about two of the Django parts, uh, urls.py uh, and views.py, uh, uh, which are the two uh, Django parts that make up the controller part of um, there's an architectural framework that's been popular for 20 years or so called MVC, Model View uh, Controller. And those are not the terms that are used in uh, Django because uh, Django use, uses its own name for the parts. But in, um, in uh, Django, uh, the model is called the model, okay? Uh, uh, the view is called the template, and the controller is called uh, urls.py uh, and uh, views.py. Uh, so we cover those two in the week that we do the, the controller. Uh, then we do a thing uh, called link uh, pages where we really get this thing uh, we get our tutorial project again. Our, uh, the tutorial project that we're on here is called Easy University or Easy U. Um, and uh, that's where it starts to behave like a, 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 full, uh, a full web app. Um, in week 10, we're going to work on uh, forms. Uh, in most uh, web frameworks, uh, forms uh, uh, take a lot of coding in Django, uh, provided that you're willing to take uh, the, the appearance of the default uh, web forms. Um, you can generate web forms without a lot of code. And um, so that's going to be fun. Uh, pagination in static files is uh, how are we going to serve up the static files, things like uh, oh, images and CSS uh, pages and all that. And uh, pagination, we're going to learn how to create a page, uh, a paged version of some output. Once you have more than uh, 20 lines of output, uh, you know, you don't want to just scroll down forever. You do want to kind of organize them by uh, pages. Uh, after that, we work on this thing called uh, generic uh, class-based uh, views. Um, this is the uh, high magic way to do... Um, uh, 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 Django. Um, I think to a certain extent that's what we're using in the Vincent uh, chapter. So uh, one of my objections to just doing everything with uh, Vincent is that he introduces you to the most kind of magical form of a Django where you know the least about how things work. Okay. And what uh, what uh, uh, Pinkham does as we follow his approach to building an application is that um, we build things up from no magic to a little magic to a little more magic to a little more magic to this uh, generic class-based views is kind of Django high magic. Uh, which you can be very good at if you knew how all the other things already work. Okay, so we're going to do that. Then we're going to learn how to do authentication and authorization. And then we're going to deploy uh, to a site on the web, an external site. The deployment that we're going to do is at a site called Python Anywhere, where we can get a free site. Okay, so a lot of work here. Now, your final project, I'm going to expect you early on, I'm going to expect you to be brainstorming about what to do for a final project. 
and then I'm going to want you to commit to one and then probably follow along a week or two behind the tutorial track okay and to be building your own uh, final project app uh, kind of in the shadow of our tutorial app okay is it possible that you could get more than one week uh, behind yeah, you could get two weeks behind, but you've got to catch up before the end. Uh, could you get three weeks behind? Yeah, people have gotten three weeks behind and caught up. Could you, know, could you get 10 weeks uh, behind and still do a good job on your final project? Uh, no. Okay, if you allow yourself to get that far uh, behind, if you wait till the end of the course to do your final project, um, you'll do a minor job and not get all the points that you're going to want to get. Okay, so uh, we're going to what I've shown is here is you doing everything one week after we do it in the tutorial track, and then you get an open week in week uh, 15 to uh, pull things uh, uh, together. You can pull it together in weeks 15 and 16 and then we submit the project in the end of week 16. Okay? Now, do people track to that? No, they don't. Some people do, though, and they have a really nice experience. All right? Uh, are there people who have waited to, you know, the bitter end to start the final project? Yeah, there have. I don't think they've had good scores, though. <laughs> All right. Um, and the, the very last thing that we have is the framework evaluation uh, paper. It's due on week 15. OK. And again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to learn about in depth. We're trying to learn about another framework other than uh, Django. OK. Does it have to be a Python framework? Nope. Could be a Java framework, could be a JavaScript framework. Okay, it just has to be a backend application framework. Okay, and then so how are you going to pick it? Well, you're going to first you're going to figure out well what would be the requirements that I would want to meet. Okay, it might be requirements you've already had in some job or you know some job that you're doing now. Um, uh, or it could be just your imagination of what the requirements would be um, when you get to your day job. And then you're just going to uh, pick a promising web application framework. And you're going to, so we're going to brainstorm in the beginning. Then we're going to research the framework. Then we're going to write an outline, a draft, a draft, final revisions, and submit. Okay. So that's what's going on, okay? Now, I'm not going to walk through the whole schedule and talk to you about each individual thing. But uh, when you see this roadmap, you can see that uh, when we look at the weekly schedule, which I'm going to do here, you might lose the fact that there are kind of like three trends going on. There's the, there's the tutorial track. There's the final project uh, track, and there's a paper track, okay? And I'm going to be reminding you of those three tracks every week as we go through and where we are on each one. Um, I'm just going to uh, show you the, uh, the weekly schedule for uh, our course. The weekly schedule is organized into weeks. This is index uh, page. The week numbers are the links to get to the pages for the weeks. And we're going to look at week one. OK. Uh, the weekly schedule uh, pages are organized into blocks of content that have to do with some event. OK, so the first event of the week is the class uh, session on uh, Thursday afternoon from 4 to 6. Um, the second event is the optional lab uh, session on Sunday from 9 to 10. And the third event is a weekly assignments uh, deadline. So the things that you're going to hand in are going to be uh, part of that. And um, 
the weekly assignments here um, are the big deal. Okay, well, let's uh, talk about everything. So the uh, the in week one, uh, I want you to have read the syllabus, the road map, and there's a good article on Wikipedia about web frameworks that are going to help you kind of get oriented. Okay. Uh, there's uh, uh, the lecture here. That's what you're listening to now. So I think I'll probably already have published it by the time that you're playing this. And then, of course, there's that video about how to play my videos. Uh, in the first class, we're going to introduce ourselves as a way to get to know each other and set expectations. So read through this and uh, give it some thought. Uh, they're probably, the first uh, class is probably going to run the two hours just to get the introductions and stuff done. So I will be available for lab at the end. Okay, but that'll probably be uh, beyond the, uh, the six o'clock ending time. Okay, but if you need some help, I'll be there. Uh, we're going to have a dedicated lab session on Sunday morning from 9 to 10. And the thing that I want to say is um, remember to try your hand at whatever we're trying to do for the week on Saturday so that you'll know to come on Sunday. I know most people don't like to get up for a 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. I know I don't. Uh, but uh, if you try your work on Saturday, if everything is going smoothly, even if you haven't finished, well, you're probably okay. Okay, but if, you, if you're banging your head on Saturday, you definitely want to be here on Sunday morning. Okay, and then let's just look at what has to be done in the first week again. There's only one thing here that could be characterized as a hand in. Okay. Um, during the first two weeks of the course, either in week one or week two, I want you to uh, post a greetings uh, post to the service uh, desk. So I've got this assignment in the weekly assignments for one and two. OK, uh, you have to choose your uh, computer. OK, and I've got some content here for that. You have to install and or update Anaconda. OK, so if you already have Anaconda, it might be out of date. OK, so if you play the tutorial on installing Anaconda, even if you haven't installed it, it'll show you how to update it. OK, so please uh, do that, even if you've taken a course and you have Anaconda installed already, because I'm going to want to make sure you have the updated Anaconda installed. OK. Uh, I have a, um, the tutorials on installing Anaconda show you how to make a virtual environment for uh, Python, okay? Uh, the virtual environment that we're going to be using in this course is uh, another one. Uh, that's going to be called E for Trainer uh, Django course, and it's going to include uh, Python 3.10 and Django 4.1. So uh, before the weekend's out here, I'm going to uh, post a video showing you how to create that virtual environment. So that's not uh, published yet. Uh, installing uh, PyCharm Professional. Um, we definitely want to use uh, PyCharm Professional. We don't want to use uh, either the community version or the um, PyCharm Edu uh, version. The PyCharm, the PyCharm Edu version, even though you might have used it in a previous uh, class, has been discontinued. Uh, so you definitely don't want to be working with that. And uh, the PyCharm Professional version is the one that has the most features that we need. It's the one that works with um, uh, Django. Okay, so I'm going to update these two videos as well uh, over the course of this weekend to make sure that you... Um, 
they've kind of changed how we how we select our virtual environment with from within uh, PyCharm. And since that's new, I'm doing a new version of these two videos. Unfortunately, the videos for these uh, products have a pretty short life because the products get enhanced all the time. And that's what's driving uh, this. I've already talked a bit about uh, Git. Now, again, for those of you who have already worked with Git, well, I'm going to want you to work with uh, Git all the way through. If for nothing else, okay, it's a way to it's a way to back up when you get into trouble. Okay, a lot of these assignments that you're going to be uh, be doing, you're going to be uh, uh, following the leader on a tutorial, and it's pretty common when you're doing that to get down a rabbit hole, and and think that you've ruined your project. Well, if you've made commits all the way along, you just have to find the last thing you committed uh, that wasn't screwed up and revert to it. Okay, you don't have to start from the beginning. Okay, uh, but in terms of having to use Git, again, we're only going to use it for the deployment, uh, which is going to happen in early April. Okay, uh, I have a lot of information here about Git. Uh, I have a link to one course in LinkedIn Learning. Um, um, I talk here about the tools that I use for a for uh, a lot of people use uh, Git at the command line, and if you want to do that, well, then you just have to install uh, Git. Okay. Uh, I think most people prefer to use a graphical Git client. Uh, it turns out that uh, PyCharm has a graphical Git uh, client. I don't really like it, but some people use it. Certainly the folks at uh, JetBrains think it's uh, great, right? Uh, the one that I'm currently using, the graphical client I'm currently using is a GitHub uh, Desktop. I used to use a source a tree, but I find it just horrible now. Um, a lot of things that used to work seem to be broken. Um, I had a lot of people in the class, uh, in my classes, and uh, some uh, of my TAs, when I talked to them about what we should be using, they thought that we should be using uh, GitHub and GitHub uh, Desktop. So that's why that's at the top of my list. Um, you're going to need to create a remote repository using one of the remote repository providers. Uh, in past years, I used to use uh, uh, Bitbucket. Uh, that's from Atlassian uh, uh, Software. They're the same people who make uh, source uh, tree. And I'm finding that that hasn't been working for me for at least a uh, a year it has been working well so i've gone over to github and that's what i'm recommending okay and the very last thing that you need to do and again you're not going to need this until we deploy which is again going to be in early april but you might want to deploy something earlier than that uh we need an account at python anywhere okay now you can deploy to a lot of places but when you do the deployment assignment we're going to want you to deploy to Python anywhere because we're going to want to go in and look at the way you configured the uh, deployment, which is a thing we can do at Python anywhere. Okay, so um, again, for the deployment assignment, you're going to need an account at Python anywhere. So uh, get working on that. Okay. Uh, as other resources, I have a link here to the ProGit book. Um, I guess because I had so many things here related to Git. All right, so that's week one. Again, let's just take a peek in, into week two, what's going on in week two. In week two, we're going to begin to read the Vincent uh, book, okay? And um, the big uh, chapter for us is going to be uh, chapter five, okay? Uh, 
as for the coding assignment, um, the, some, the, the coding assignment is going to be to do uh, the tutorial and chapter five. I have to detail that in the uh, instructions and I am going to do a tutorial uh, for how to get you started. One big thing to remember here is that uh, almost every uh, every uh, uh, Django book that you get, okay, um, it uses free tools, okay. So almost everybody has you work at the command line, okay. So they don't have you use. Um, an IDE like a uh, uh, PyCharm uh, professional, okay? They have you use the, um, they have to create virtual environments. They have you use uh, popular open source uh, tools. They don't have you use these Anaconda tools that I have you use. Why did they do that? Well, I think they want to make it accessible to people of all levels of income. So they want to make sure that the people who buy their book and do their tutorial don't have to pay for anything. Okay. Now, I found a, a way for us to use a preferred tool set, including Anaconda and PyCharm Professional, um, that doesn't cost you anything either while you're in the course uh, or while you're at the university. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to have a, 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 a tutorials that show you how to use our preferred tool set in order to do the uh, tutorial, for instance, that's in the Vincent uh, book. Okay, so the uh, tutorial that I'm going to have right here is going to say, okay, now we're going to do the work in uh, chapter five of the Vincent uh, book, but we're not going to follow it word for word because we're going to use our preferred tools. Okay. All right. So that's what's coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and if you want to see the details of the rest of the weeks, they're consistent with what I talked about in the roadmap and you can look uh, through. Okay, so uh, that's all I'm going to say about the weekly schedule. That's all I'm going to say about the roadmap. But I am going to say some more stuff about the uh, syllabus. Okay. Now, here's the part where I walk you through the, the syllabus and I try to set the expectations for the course. You know, what work I'm going to expect you to do. So uh, here are the elements of the course. We have the readings, okay? Um, the early readings are in uh, the Vincent book. Uh, the uh, later ones are in the Pinkham book. And then from time to time, I'll be pointing you to things and other books on uh, the O'Reilly site, okay? Now... Because most of these uh, books are organized as tutorials, okay, and we're not going to be following all the tutorials, um, the week ahead, I'm going to be giving you kind of a peek at the readings and say, you know, what parts I think you should pay a lot of attention to and which parts I think you can skip over. All right, I'll probably do that in class the week uh, uh, before. Okay, if we're not going to actually be typing in the code, we don't have to read every little word. All right. Um, lectures and lecture videos. Okay, again, uh, this is a learn by doing course. So there's not going to be a lot of lecturing. I think I have a lecture video or two, and I'll have a lecture or two in class. But for the most part, we're going to learn by doing, which is to follow my tutorial videos. Okay. Tutorial videos, I've got two types. One is how to install this or that, or how to read a grading rubric or uh, grading feedback form. Okay. 
And then the other thing I have are is uh, sort of the coding assignment for the week. And a lot of these are follow the leader tutorials. Now, I'm going to expect you to play all these. OK. Now, what works great for the uh, tutorials is if you have two screens. You've got one to play the tutorial on and you've got one to do the work on. OK, they don't have to be on the same uh, computer. I, I mean, if you have an iPad and a laptop, you can play the play the video on the iPad and you can do your work on the laptop. OK, now, can you do it if you only have one screen? Yes, you can, but you have to go back and forth between the windows. I bet if you only have one screen, you're pretty good at that. OK, somebody like me, I'm here at my desk. I've got um, I've got my laptop up and I've got two 24 inch monitors here and I am spoiled. So I uh, typically do things with two screens. Um, the coding assignments uh, are going to be weekly for the most part. I think we, we don't get a week off until the end. Uh, they're mostly based on uh, tutorials. Um, the first one, the Vincent one, you're going to be following the, you know, the written uh, tutorial in Vincent uh, uh, chapter five. And then the rest of them, you're going to be following my written instructions and my follow the leader uh, uh, tutorial videos. OK. Um, when we come to class the next time, one is I'm going to publish my solution, at least the ones for the ECU tutorials. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how that went. And uh, sometimes uh, there's not going to be a lot of talking. It's going to be, yeah, that was straightforward for everybody. Uh, and sometimes there'll be more to talk about. OK, so because we're all doing the same thing and we're doing follow the leader, uh, the amount of conversation that we have about solutions is pretty variable. It can be very, it can be very short a lot of weeks and, and then uh, some weeks you folks have a lot to ask about and a lot to say. And I find a way to accommodate that. Now, once we've reviewed the solution, I'm going to expect you to know what grade you got on that assignment. Okay? We, we've looked at the solution. You know what you got wrong. You know the grading rubric. Okay? Um, uh, now, our goal is, is to grade these things and send you feedback within uh, two weeks. But you should know at that next class how you did. OK? Um, uh, a big part of doing these coding assignments is to make a good faith effort on all parts and to hand them in on time, OK? Um, if you're not able to hand them in on time, you need to ask for an extension, okay? And I'll be talking about extensions later. Extensions that, um, I'm pretty liberal, li liberal, uh, sorry about that. I'm pretty liberal about granting extensions that, uh, uh, where you're going to be handing it in before our next class because, again, we're handing out the solution in the next class. Okay, the final project. Um, you'd be expected to plan, gather requirements for design code and test a web application using Django as your final project. Detailed instructions in a grading rubric will be published separately. I don't currently have them published. Uh, I'll have them published in about, well, certainly within a month, OK? I'm trying to clean them up a bit and make them more usable. Uh, here are the highlights, though. The web application should fully, should fully demonstrate the back-end web application framework features 
covered in class. Okay. And again, if you're doing um, the project on the schedule that I suggest, we're going to learn a feature in class in, in, in over the course of a week. And then the next week, you should probably be trying to add that feature to your project for your final project. Uh, the web application should include significant add change, it delete uh, database uh, functionality. Now, it turns out that uh, Django is a very relational uh, database oriented framework. And if you're really going to, if you're really going to learn how to use that kind of framework, you have to have, um, you're really, uh, you're really not doing it uh, justice unless you have a a full uh, uh, database maintenance application with full with all the functions often like often refer uh, referred to as CRUD C R U D. Okay, so that's uh, uh, create retrieve update, delete, C-R-U-D. Uh, the web application should be sufficiently interesting to you that you're likely to, to continue to develop and to maintain it after the course is uh, complete. This should probably be either uh, some hobby of yours that you've always wanted a web application for, that'll keep your hand in, or it should become part of your portfolio that you want to show to potential employers. Okay, um, so that's going to keep your hand in as uh, well. So uh, you're going to do best if you pick something that you have motivation for. And this is an individual assignment, not a group uh, assignment. So I'm expecting these uh, to be different. Well, different in the following way. Is it possible for two people to come up with the idea that they want to come up with a restaurant recommendation app? Yeah, I usually get two of those, okay? But it better not be the same one, right? So uh, each of you is to do your own project. Attendance, we're expecting you to attend all the meetings of the online class. If you can't make it for some reasonable reason, we're expecting you to play the recording. Participation. It's a big part of your grade and it's a big part of the class. Again, I'm not lecturing in class, okay? Only a little bit, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about this uh, stuff. OK, and if you're not talking about it, if you're not engaged, then uh, it's a wasted opportunity. So the participation part of your grade is 10 percent of the grade. It's a full letter uh, grade. So if you're not participating and you're not earning these uh, participation uh, points, that you can earn by doing these things that I, I have in the, in the bullet points. Well, then uh, you could really hurt your grade. So what things uh, do we want you to do? Well, make one uh, greetings uh, post to the service uh, desk, either in week one or week two. Uh, make a speaking uh, contribution in uh, class. Uh, 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 chat into the chat uh, capability of Zoom during uh, class. Present your solution to your coding assignments during uh, class. What we normally do is we break up into groups and we talk about how the coding assignment went. And then um, when we come back, we have one person that acts as, as the spokesperson for the group. That's how you can earn uh, points. Uh, and then sometimes they recommend that certain people in their group show their code or people volunteer to do it spontaneously. Uh, so for those uh, two activity, you earn um, uh, participation uh, points. The framework evaluation uh, paper. Uh, your paper will present the conclusions of your evaluation of the suitability of a candidate server-side web application framework other than 
Django for a set of functional and non-functional requirements which you could reasonably expect to encounter in the workplace. The length of your paper should be 1,500 to 2,000 words. In addition, you'll need to cite a minimum of 10 sources, uh, detailed instructions, and the grading rubric are will be published separately. And I think those are published already. Let me wait, uh, look. Yeah, so that's in week 15 and I have the instructions and I've got a lecture video in which I talk about requirements. This was from another course, but people who need to get more of a background on what we need, mean when we talk about functional and non-functional requirements could play that and then um well it's all here so you can go look at the details right away okay uh course grading policies now up until about a year and a half ago i didn't have a section in my syllabus like uh this and most people kind of understood how grading would be done uh but over the years, people have come back with sad stories about how they didn't understand how grading was done. And I've had to put together about a page and a half of uh, policies that uh, read like mm, the contract for a uh, lease car. I mean, they go on and on. Okay. And I apologize for that. But uh, apparently not everybody un understood and uh, we needed everybody to understand. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the headlines here. Uh, there are separate iSchool and grading uh, policies which uh, are important and, of course, uh, are a higher level than these. Careful attention to detail is required, okay? So some of you will be surprised at how many deductions we make for all of the deviations from the assignment instructions. This is a detailed course. Doing this kind of job is a detail-oriented job, and we're going to want you to meet all the expectations. That might surprise some of you, so read the instructions and read the grading rubric. Uh, assignment resubmissions are not permitted after the assignment uh, uh, deadline. Okay, so if before the deadline you realize that you forgot to do something, maybe you were talking to a friend and they said, well, how did you do uh, such and such? And you said, oh, I didn't realize we were supposed to do such and such. Well, if we haven't reached the deadline, you can resubmit it. But once we reach the deadline, that's it. Okay. Deadline extensions must be requested before the deadline. So if you need a deadline extension, again, I'm pretty liberal about granting them, especially uh, uh, if the work is going to be handed in before our next class. Deductions will be made for late submissions. So because I hand out the answers at the next class, uh, there's a big penalty for late submissions if it's 15 points, okay? So hand things in on time. Uh, assignments that are too late will not be graded. So that means if you, uh, assignment's gonna be too late if it's a coding assignment and it's 14 days late or if it's a framework evaluation paper or a final project or it's seven days, more than seven days late. If you think you're going to miss that, get an extension of that rule, okay? Don't just sit around twiddling your thumbs, okay? We have these rules so that it's practical to grade all these things. But if you've got special circumstances, you've got to stand up and ask. Grading adjustments will be limited to rounding, OK? Every assignment we have is on a 100-point scale, OK? We're going to take that 
um, assignment, it, it generally the grade comes out to, you know, 91.4 or 93.2, okay? And all, all grades that are up through 0.4 will uh, be rounded down. And all grades that are 0.5 through 0.9 will be rounded up. So all of your 100 point scale grades will be integers like 91 or 100 or 88. And that's all the rounding that we're going to do. Now, I get people who come back and say, well, if you gave me one more point, I would move from a B plus to an A. I can't do it. This is all we're doing. Rounding. Uh, regrading requests made using this service at, at desk will be given fair uh, considerations. Now, if you hand in something late and or we miss it, open a ticket on the service at desk to tell us that we need to grade it. If we do grade it and you read the grading feedback form and you don't get it, it's like, mm, these guys didn't really see what I did. Well, you can open a ticket and we'll look again. Okay. And we'll give you our honest opinion. If we miss something, we'll admit it. Uh, extra credit opportunities are not available. Okay, so I do have a deal on how I grade the homework. That means that if you do uh, a good faith job on the homework, you're not going to get a zero grade or something like that. You're going to get a, a decent uh, grade. So. It's not possible to tank your average with just one uh, uh, mistake. So given that I've done that, um, and given that I have to offer the same opportunities to everybody, uh, I can't be having extra credit work, so uh, we don't do it. Uh, assignments usually have two parts. There are, there's a regular exercise and there's a challenge exercise. If you meet all the expectations for a regular exercise um, and meet all the other rules, uh, you should be able to earn 95 uh, points. Um, that's it. 95 is a good solid A. If you want to get something higher than a 95, a 96 through a 100, you need to do the challenge exercise, okay? And those points are going to be hard to earn. And uh, the amount of help that you're going to get on those is kind of hints from me. Whereas the amount of help you're going to get on the other things is a lot of help. Okay. It's very hard to get over a 95. People do all the time, but you got to work hard. Now, uh, the next thing has to do with the grading deal for these coding assignments. And so my official legal language is coding assignment submissions that meet certain criteria are subject to a minimum score uh, guarantee. So what are the criteria? Okay, well, the first one is submitting your work in a properly named and formatted file. Now, we usually allocate uh, 10 points to this. You would think that that would be a lot of points for something so easy. Well, if you don't properly format and name the file, our grading workflow just grinds to a halt. And so I give you 10 points for that because it wouldn't be feasible to grade all your work if you didn't uh, follow that rule, okay? And then uh, the next one, submitting your work by the assignment uh, deadline. This assures that everybody will get the benefit of having tried to solve the problem. Okay, and then the work you submit has to show a good faith effort on all parts. So here's the more formal version of this. 10 points will be awarded for submitting a single properly named and properly formatted file to the Canvas submission activity. That's a lot of points for that, but consider them free. OK, um, you can consider it a big uh, penalty for messing that stuff up or you consider it uh, a real boost to your grade. OK, uh, minimums of 75 uh, points will be awarded for submissions that are submitted on time and then that demonstrate good faith effort on all parts of the assignment. 
late submissions will be awarded 74 points or fewer in this uh, category. Okay, so um, uh, if you uh, hand in a proper file and you make a good faith effort on all ports, uh, parts that we can see, uh, you're going to get an 85. Oh, and you hand it in on time. Okay, you're going to get an 85, even if while making a good faith effort, you took a seriously wrong turn. Okay, that's going to keep you from tanking your uh, your grade average. Okay. Uh, your participation grade will be based on participation points earned throughout the semester. So here are the points that you can earn. The greetings uh, post is 10 points. If you don't do this, you're foolish. Making a speaking uh, contribution in a class, uh, two points. If you make three speaking contributions in the class, you get six points. If you make eight, you get 16 points. Uh, the, the chat uh, contributions uh, during class. You chat once, you get one point. You chat uh, five times, you get five points. Presentations of your coding, uh, of your coding assignment solution during class, five points. Presentations as a spokesperson for your breakout uh, 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 group uh, during class, five points. Uh, participation grades will be calculated using a curve. The grading calculation is summarized in the following table. Please note that students earning fewer than 10 participation points earn a participation grade of zero. So if you don't do your greetings posts, you're, and then you don't get up to 10 points, which is pretty poor behavior, uh, you could wind up with a zero for participation, okay? If you do your greetings posts, you're assured to not get a zero for participation. Okay, do your greetings posts. Uh, so I grade this on a curve. Okay, so if you're at the top of the curve, you get get uh, 100. Uh, if you're at the middle, you get a 90. Uh, if you're at the bottom, you get a 60. If you are, if you have fewer than 10 participation points, you get a zero. Uh, attendance a class may affect your grade, not because we grade attendance, but, but because that's where most of the participation happens. If you don't come to class, you don't get the points, you're going to get a, a, a low participation grade. Now, academic integrity is a big thing, okay? And um, there are, there is, and uh, there's a policy that the iSchool has on academic integrity. There's a policy that the university has, okay? Uh, and those are supreme, okay? Now, what am I going to consider an academic integrity violation in this uh, course? Well, I'm going to expect you to do your own work, right? Now, things are a little different here because there's a lot of follow the leader work, okay? So the follow the leader work, starter files, there are times where I give you or maybe um, the author, uh, Vincent, gives you a starter file. Well, you're just entitled to use them without further uh, modification. Uh, there's a lot of follow the leader text, okay? Uh, well, you're entitled to use that uh, too, okay? Now, uh, the follow the leader text, you're expected, to, you know, to type in, all right? You're not, you're not expected to uh, go to one of your class mates and say, you know, did you type in all that tutorial code here? Let me copy. That's a violation. Okay. Um, the non-tutorial things, the things that are, are not follow the leader, well, uh, those are supposed to be completely independent. Uh, 
um, you shouldn't be copying from your classmates. You shouldn't be copying from uh, people from prior classes. One new thing that has uh, come up is, uh, are you entitled to take the assignment and give it to some kind of AI tool like a chat uh, GPT? And the answer is you're not, okay? Um, we can talk about this in class and, and these kinds of tools I think might be, might turn out in the long run to be great coding assistants, okay? But to only be useful as a coding assistant to you if you know how to do the work yourself. Because how will you ever be able to su supervise your AI coding assistant if you don't know how to write the code? Okay. So, um, and uh, definitely in your your own uh, 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 final project and uh, definitely in your own paper, your work should be completely different from those of your class mates and uh, people who've taken the class uh, previously. Okay, it's a violation to, um, it's a violation to make a joint work and submit it by multiple people. Now, can you discuss things? Yeah, you can. Uh, I think a great way to do that is maybe to discuss things in some kind of a whiteboard uh, session where you, know, you, you know, kind of talk through things and get uh, good ideas, but then you have to go do the coding yourself. Okay, and we're going to be checking uh, code to look for instances of uh, violations. And the penalties for this are stiff. Okay, and you would think that people wouldn't do it, but the fact is that they do. Um, and, uh, and they do it in classes where I have uh, two labs a week where you can come and get help with your code. So I, I don't understand it, and maybe you don't understand it either, but uh, don't fall into it because it's a bad place to be. Um, the basis for determining the grade. So 10% uh, of your final grade is uh, participation. The coding assignments are 35%. Uh, percent. The framework evaluation paper is 20%. The final project is 35%, uh, percent. okay? Um, the only uh, adjustments are going to be made are rounding to get from uh, a fractional number grade to an integer one. That's it, okay? Now, here's the last uh, part, and I know this has gone a while, so, but I, I want to get your uh, attention here. These uh, policies you see at the, at the end of the um, syllabus are what we call in kind of a, a contract language, we call it boilerplate. And what do we mean by that? Well, we mean that this is language that goes into every instance. So every syllabus we have should have these same things at the end. Eh, one professor could have a slightly older or newer version, but they all say essentially the same thing. So, but they're really important things. And they're really important that you understand it, what the expectations are. A lot of things, a lot of these things have to do with the help that you may be entitled to. So it's important that you understand the help that you may be entitled to. So if you've seen these already and you already understand them, well, great. But they're really important, so make sure that you do. Okay. Uh, so incomplete uh, grades. It's very hard to get an incomplete um, as a grade at Illinois. And if you think that you're, that's the thing for you, well, there are some links here to find out some more. Uh, these academic integrity infractions are a very big deal. So you ought to understand what's expected of you. And I gave you lots of uh, uh, details on that a few minutes ago. A statement of inclusion. We're very serious about this being a safe place to learn and work. 
So the way that we treat you should reflect the fact that it's a safe space. The way that you treat us should be the same and the way that you treat each other should be the same. Um, as long as we're all meeting those expectations, we're going to have a great experience. If we start to fall short, well, then uh, some intervention is going to be is going to be required and should be expected. Uh, religious observances. OK, we have the university holidays that we do, but some of you uh, uh, observe religious holidays and such that are outside of this uh, calendar and there's a procedure for informing us um, that you want to observe them and get special consideration so please follow that link and fill up that form accessibility okay not all people are uh, typically abled and even typically abled people show um, a wide range of abilities and styles, okay? We recognize that here at the university, and we have a whole uh, department, uh, DRES, Disability Resources and Education S Services for people who need accommodations to deal with their abilities, okay? Um, this is a great place. These are great uh, people. If you ha have already been there and you have dress accommodations and you you need to share them with me, you can either send them to me in an email. You could upload them to a ticket, um, but it won't generate a lot of the emails. So feel free to send them to me via email. If you don't have dress accommodations and you think maybe I would be entitled to some, I invite you to go talk to the Drez uh, folks. They're great folks. Okay. Uh, enough said on that. COVID-19. Okay. Uh, we have a policy uh, to keep us all safe with respect to COVID-19. We're going to expect you to observe it. In the coming semester, um, they're kind of ramping down some of the testing, but they still have a lot of testing available. Uh, they're not requiring masks in indoor sp spaces, but they're recommending them. Uh, I recommend them in my class. Um, this is the semester that I turn 70, 70. It's hard to believe, but it's actually come along. So I wear a mask whenever I'm inside with other people. And that, that means uh, I don't go out to eat a lot, <laughs> OK? Um, I go out to eat a lot in the summertime, though. So um, if you can possibly wear a mask in class, oh, I'm sorry. This is an online class. Well, that's my pitch, OK? I, I disclosed my ripe old age when I didn't even have to. How about that? But uh, if we're doing in-person things, and we might do an in-person thing when I'm down at school, uh, I'm going to be wearing a mask. Okay. Uh, that's enough there. So again, if you understand all these things, great. If you need some help under them, I might not be the person to help you, but I'm a person who can help you find help. Okay. So feel free to come to me as a way, great way of getting started with help. Okay, that's it for the syllabus. That's all of the contents. Uh, I just want to make a couple of comments here as I wrap up. This is a tremendously fun uh, course because we build stuff all semester long. And if you're a person who likes to build things, well, this is for you. Okay? Um, one of the things that we build this easy U uh, tutorial uh, system is the thing that I designed, OK? Uh, another thing that we build uh, is the thing that you design, OK? It's all you. It's something for you. It just has to check all the boxes of what I want you to be demonstrating, OK? So um, there's a lot of building. Uh, there's a lot of fun st st stuff to learn. 
Um, I really enjoy it. I think historically, I think I've been teaching this for about four or five years. Historically, you know, the students really love this uh, course, and I would expect the same for you. So I'm really looking forward uh, to meeting all of you in week one, and I'm going to say bye until then. Bye-bye.